When you read in the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 10, verse 16, the Lord Jesus is talking here. He said to his 12 disciples, he said, I am sending you like sheep in the midst of wolves. I am sending you like sheep in the midst of wolves. Be wise as a serpent and be innocent as a dove. Be wise as a serpent and be innocent as a dove. Wow. Adam and Eve, when they ate from the forbidden tree, they lost their innocence. They were embarrassed. They saw themselves naked. They were embarrassed. They hid themselves from God. The Lord, in the Gospel of Matthew, the New Testament, He said, I'm sending you like sheep to the disciples. I'm sending you like sheep in the midst of wolves. Be wise as a serpent, innocent as a dove. Now, someone would wonder, what does the word innocence mean here? What does the Lord mean, be innocent as a dove? Innocence, my beloved, it doesn't mean that I am simple, I am humble, I am like a little baby, I don't know any better. No, I don't know any better, it's called ignorance. The Lord Jesus does not want you to be ignorant like the intellectual capacity of a little child, but he wants you to be innocent like a child. And that's why the Lord said, unless you come back and be like a little kid, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. To come back as a kid, he's talking about innocence, not wisdom. No, no, you need to be wise as a serpent, not ignorant. You need to be wise as a serpent, but you need to be innocent as a dove. Now, why a dove relates to innocence? Out of the entire, entire birds of the sky, out of the entire birds of the sky, when any bird comes and builds a nest and begin to establish a family as well, they lay their eggs. The moment that bird just feels there is a danger approaching, not, not seeing, feeling there is a danger approaching, the first thing that bird does, takes that nest and moves it elsewhere. They change their spot. The only bird of the sky that never changes the nest is the dove. The dove builds a nest, lays the eggs, have babies. The dove goes flying, searching for food to come and feed those babies. As the, as the dove goes searching for food, the enemy comes, an eagle or a snake climb up the tree, an eagle comes from above and they devour that nest. They eat some of those babies, kill some of those babies and leave them in the nest. The mother dove comes back with food to feed her children. When she sees the, some of the babies are missing gone, some of them dead in the nest, the only bird out of the sky, that dove sits in that nest, mourns, mourns for the loss of the babies and those who were killed and those who got lost. The dove cries like a human being, my beloveds. The dove cries like a human being, mourning for the loss of her, of her babies. But one thing the dove never does, the dove never changes the location of the nest. The dove brings, lays eggs again and remains there till death remains there. When the Lord Jesus said to the apostles, I'm sending you like sheep in the midst of wolves. I want you to be wise as a serpent, innocent as a dove, meaning when a sheep goes into the wolf, the wolf will devour you. The wolf will persecute you. You are going to be persecuted for my name's sake. Some of you will be killed. Some of you will be thrown in prison. Some of you will be kicked, punched, let, you know, whipped and thrown out. You will be ridiculed for my name. I want you to be standing steadfast in my way. Don't ever change your nest and go to another path. Christ has placed you in his path. 
No matter what persecutions come your way, I want you to be faithful and loyal to your Christ. Remain in the path and in the way of Christ. Be like the dove, innocent, meaning never changing your path because of tribulations, persecutions, and, and being killed for the name of Christ. Learn from the dove. Stay where you are, steadfast, firm in the Lord. Don't change your path. This is innocence. Wow. Looks like I'm not going to finish the 10 points. I have to elaborate so you understand why the Lord Jesus said, wise as a serpent, innocent as a dove. The Lord speaks of duetto, dual language. He says in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 5, you are the light of the world, you are the salt of the earth too. About the Lord himself, he is the Lamb of God and he is the Lion of the tribe of Judah. He is the Lamb and he is the Lion too. Now, they are two parallel lines, never meet. Two parallel lines never meet. For every orthodoxy is paradoxy. Paradoxy, they are paradoxical lines. Two parallel lines never meet. It doesn't make sense. God brings out of the grave life. God brings out of death life. They are two parallel lines. They will never meet. Life is life and death is death. Death will never be life. Life will never be death. Life cannot die and death cannot live. But God said, out of death I'll bring life. For this is God. What is impossible to man is possible to God. I bring out of the two parallel lines my mightiness. I am the lamb and I am the lion. Two parallel lines don't meet. The lamb so weak, the lion so powerful. Salt and light, light comes from heaven, salt comes from the ocean, from below, light from above, salt from below, two different, two parallel lines, never meet. Wise as a serpent, innocent as a dove, two parallel lines. But these two parallel lines are amazing when you have them together. Body and spirit, body and spirit and by the way salt um, is is made out of two substances and these two substances when you take them on their own separately they can be very fatal they are poison um, sodium and chlor chlorine or chlorine chlor and sodium sodium is poisonous and chlorine is poisonous on its own but when you mix them together sodium and chlor become salt and when you put salt in your food wow food without salt they are tasteless no matter how beautiful they are but they have no taste what brings flavor to that food is the salt but the salt is made out of two poisonous substance if you take them separately but the two together gives you flavor, taste, and nourishment, and life. The body and the spirit, two different substance. Body on its own, fatal. Spirit on, her, on its own is very poisonous and, and it's very fatal. But when the body and the spirit are together, when you bring Jesus into the equation, he'll make sure that the, that the level or the measure of chlor and the measure of sodium is perfect measures so that that way it is not poison to kill you. The Lord will make sure the measures of the chlor and sodium are perfect measures. It is the only one, it is the Lord Jesus who brings the body and the spirit into harmony and make these two different um, substances, he brings them into unity and make them live together in unity. It is Christ who gives the perfect measure to the body and the spirit to make him live in harmony and absolute perfect union. Now, what is a serpent? We've been talking about the serpent. The serpent is the enemy. 
Satan came into the serpent. The serpent is the enemy. But the Lord actually commended the enemy for, for, for the wisdom that, that the enemy has. He said, learn from the enemy. He's very wise. The snake, my beloved, when it encounters an enemy, the snake realizes, when, it, when the snake realizes that it cannot win the battle with this enemy, so if it engages in a fight with the enemy, the enemy is stronger than the snake, the snake does one thing. It actually hides its head and, and rotates the body on top of that head. The Lord Jesus says, you are sheep being sent by me in the midst of wolves. Protect your head. What does it mean, protect your head like the snake? The Lord says, the word I have bestowed, I have given you, bestowed upon you. The word that, I, that you heard through your ears, I want my word to remain in your head. Don't ever let no one to brainwash you and take you away from the truth. Protect your head like the snake. What you heard from your Jesus, hold on to it. Don't let any false teachings to come and brainwash you and take the true word from your head and with it take your soul, spirit and body into perdition. What I gave you, my disciples, is the truth. Protect your head from the enemy. Don't let the enemy deceive you and brainwash you. Be wise as a serpent. Protect your head. Be innocent as a dove. Remain faithful in my way. Don't veer off the road when you are persecuted. Don't veer off the road when you are having it tough. Don't veer off the road because you are being, you are going through tri tribulation for the Lord's sake. No matter how much they persecute you for my sake, remain faithful to me like a, like a dove. Be innocent. Remain in your path. Innocence on its own is ignorance. Wisdom on its own is evilness. But the Lord put it together. Be wise as a serpent, be innocent as a dove. Together, not one on its own, no. Innocence only, ignorance. Wisdom only, evil. Satan, that is why he is called the evil one. Please pay attention. The Holy Bible refers to us as sinners, not evil. Who is the evil one? Satan. Why? Because Satan was given wisdom, but that wisdom, he lost it because he wanted to be like God. He wanted to be another God in heaven. So wisdom alone becomes evil. He lost innocence. That's why he made Eve and Adam lose their innocence. Because he lost it. He was once upon a time in heaven as an innocent angel. The moment he broke God's word, he lost that innocence. He, he did not lose his wisdom, but he lost his innocence as a dove. So he, he only ended up with wisdom. Wisdom alone is evil. So now Satan uses his wisdom for evil things because he doesn't have innocence anymore. Innocence only, ignorance. But when the Lord Jesus gave us innocence and wisdom together, it is the power of God. Jesus, the perfect man, Whatever his father in heaven gave him, Jesus protected his head. He was tempted by the tempter, but Jesus never failed. Because whatever his daddy instilled in his head, that head was protected by the Lord. His body was shredded on the cross, but he preserved the head. For as long as the head is preserved, the body will, will, will resurrect. You can crush this body. I'll be given the glorified body, Satan. I have crushed your head. You crushed my body, but I crushed your head. For as long as the head is protected, the body can grow again. But once the head is gone, 
Even if the body is intact, it will be dead. What gives life to the body is the head. The moment the head is gone, the body is gone automatically. So the Lord Jesus on the cross is innocence as the dove and wisdom as a serpent at the same time. Jesus, he remained loyal to his daddy. He remained faithful to his daddy. He came to do the will of his daddy and he did it till the end, the death of the cross. He never veered off the road no matter what came his way. That is the innocence of the dove. And whatever came his way was put to shame because he protected his head. He never let nothing and no one to brainwash him and take the word of God from his head. He was wise like a serpent, protected his faith, protected his mission till the very end. This is the power of God. Christ hanged on the cross, innocence and wisdom at the same time. But when we lose our innocence, we have lost the way of Christ. We have veered off from the way of Christ because innocence is the dove and the dove remains in the path, never changes the path. 